Today, we are going to talk about exploring the vulnerabilities of PRNU-based camera fingerprinting. What is camera fingerprinting? It is a technique employed to identify the camera is to acquire an image. How can camera fingerprinting be done? Each camera or sensor has a unique reference pattern known as sensor pattern noise. Photoresponse non-uniformity or PRNU is a type of multiplicative sensor pattern noise present in an image. If the PRNU can be extracted from an image, it can be used for camera fingerprinting. It usually involves three steps. First, known as the extraction step, which involves extracting the PRNU from an image by removing the scene. Second step involves correlation where the extracted PRNU is matched against known reference patterns. And finally, the decision step in which an image is assigned to that sensor that results in the highest correlation value. What are the applications of camera fingerprinting? It can be used to identify the source or origin of an image and is useful in the field of digital image forensics. Secondly, it can be used as a copyright protection tool in the field of multimedia security. But how about a smartphone? If PRNU can be used to correctly identify the smartphone camera, it can be also used to implicitly link the device to its owner. This kind of user device association, although it sounds cool, can pose privacy concerns. How do we address such concerns? We propose two sensor de-identification schemes in the context of privacy preservation. Our main goal is to perform PRNU-based sensor de-identification on biometric images such as face, iris, or periocular images. In this context, we will suppress the sensor-specific information but still retain the biometric information. The first method is known as image-based PRNU suppression. In this method, first we take an image from the source sensor S and we modify patch by patch of that image using another candidate image selected from a set of images belonging to a different target sensor T. We perform this iterative modification and the output is known as the PRNU spoofed image because in this case, the output will be misclassified as belonging to the target sensor T instead of the source sensor S. This is how our method works. On the left is the PRNU perturbed image. On the right is the variation of the correlation values. Along the x-axis are the iris sensors. Along the y-axis are the NCC, the normalized cross-correlation values. As you can see, as the image is iteratively modified, the NCC value of the source sensor IC decreases, whereas that of the target sensor LG40 increases, thereby resulting in successful PRNU spoofing. The second method is known as DCT-based PRNU suppression. In this method, we strategically modulate the DCT coefficients in order to suppress high-frequency information. Why do we do so? Because PRNU typically resides in the high frequencies. We do two tasks. The first is known as DCT-based PRNU anonymization. In this case, the high-frequency PRNU components are suppressed such that the output is a PRNU anonymized image that can be assigned to any random sensor other than the source sensor. The second task is known as DCT-based PRNU spoofing, in which we deliberately insert the high-frequency components of a target sensor, thereby resulting in PRNU spoofing. For further questions, please visit our lab website or contact me.